Hello and good afternoon and welcome again to uh, another edition of PCA Live. Um, we're going to be joined today by our good friend Steve Zangle from Los Caídos. Uh, I'm very excited that for those of you that are not familiar with this company to get introduced to this company and to Steve. I had the great pleasure of uh, meeting Steve last year at our trade at the trade show and introduced to his great company and the great cause. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to this conversation today. Not only that, Steve's got a really good special announcement. So for all PCA retailers, I'll pay attention to this because this is something really cool that we're really excited about today. So I'm enjoying somewhat of a nice day outside today. Uh, so apparently our landscapers in, for, for the complex that I live in have decided to capitalize on the nice day as well. So hopefully they finish, but hopefully you don't get, hear too much mowing or leaf blowers going on. Uh, but at any rate, without further ado, I'd like to bring up Steve from Los Caídos. Steve, my good friend, how are you doing? What's going on, everybody? How are you, Scott? Nice to see you, man. Good to see you, too. How are you doing? You uh, staying warm up there? Uh, I'm doing well, but I'm doing well cold. It's not that warm <laughs> up here. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> but it's getting better. The sun's coming out, but it's still a little chilly, man. Well, How good, about near good. you? You know, it's uh, yesterday was really, really nice, and but it, it kept raining. It's been raining pretty bad on and off here. But today, clear skies, but it dropped down to like 55 degrees. So for me, that's that's still smoking weather. I'm going to ask you a quick question, too, because I'm looking at you, and I've seen a lot of blogs about this, considering all hairstylists are closed. Do you get, <laughs> do, do you get colder? Seriously, does your head get colder? Like, do you prefer to wear hats in colder weather because of your head? Like uh, I have absolutely. a hat on right now because, of course, my company name, but I always wear a hat because it just keeps me generally warmer. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, last night it was lightly raining. I was out, outside and out back having a cigar, and and uh, rain was starting to drip on. And it was funny because uh, you know my daughter was outside and just enjoying because it was a nice night. And she, you know, had uh, a thing on with a hoodie and whatever else was outside. And and I was like, okay, it's getting a little too much for me. It's getting a little cold now because the wind and everything else is picking up. And she was like, how are you cold, Dad? <laughs> I was like, because I've got no hair. It's getting cold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I wondered if that, I wondered if that mattered. Not to be funny, I just was wondering if that mattered because I I'm always in a hat up here because my head's cold and I have a little bit of hair. I a lot less than I used to, but I I just uh, that's all. I was just interested. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It does. It yeah, it definitely get colder. And I particularly the weather out here when it gets humid and cold, and then that combined, especially if it gets wet or whatever else. Yeah, I generally will wear a hat in the wintertime. Otherwise, it gets really cold and numb really quickly. Oh, so. yeah, I can't imagine that, dude. <laughs> well, all right, so uh, thanks for joining us today. Well, first, I uh, would like you to be able to kind of introduce who you are, a little bit about your background within the industry, but also to explain Los Caídos and your unique company, because you have a very, very unique uh, company and what you stand for and what you do. And so I'd um, can you kind of just go into a little bit about how you got into the industry and then let's dive into Los Caídos and learn more about your, your, uh, your company. Sure. I appreciate that. Uh, long story made very short because you guys did a phenomenal article on my company in the October issue, September, October issue, I believe, of the PCA yeah. magazine. So thank you for that. Uh, but long story short, I was coaching Division One basketball at Hampton University. Uh, the guy who brought me in, the head coach, my boss, we didn't make the NC2A tournament. So uh, they fired him and I was retained and signed to Kicks New Jersey. But the head coach there now, Buck Joyner, you know, if you're in the industry, you understand he really wants to bring in his own people. So I respectfully said, hey, Buck, here are the two people uh, from Jersey, New York that I signed. Uh, Mike Tuck, Mike Tuit, Chuck Funches. Have at it. I went to work part time with the guy named Boo Williams doing all the AAU for Nike scheduling. And then uh, my wife probably said the best thing she ever could have said to me in her lifetime. She said, hey, by the way, do you know there's a really good cigar shop up the street? And that ended up being Emerson's in Hampton Peninsula Town Center. I go over there, ask for a job. He said no. Uh, he was full. So I kept asking and begging and begging and begging. Finally, Scott, who was a, is a Jersey guy, was born in the same hospital as my sons. Um, and ended up giving me a job and opportunity. He was one of the best people, best retailers I ever could work for. Um, I cannot imagine having stepped in shit any easier than working for Scott Regina. Let me just say that. So I work for him, get all the experience. My wife and I decide we're going to move back to Jersey. I asked for Scott's blessing to open up a cigar shop. He's like, dude, you're going back to Jersey. It's not like you're opening up the street. And he's like, yeah, you have my blessing. Go do it. So we sat, we talked, really kicked it around. He was very instrumental. I met a lot of guys too, like Rocky launched his 50th cigar there, Ernesto, Glenn Case. Like 
Lido, everybody always came through Scott's place to launch a cigar, have these great deals. So I met a ton of guys in the industry through my service with Scott. So then I come back to Jersey and Scott was very instrumental and I had developed those relationships. So I was able to open some accounts pretty quickly. I had a little place in Seaside, New Jersey, 500 feet off the beach for about eight months before Hurricane Sandy wiped that out. And then I reopened a year later about, I don't know, up in Manasquan, New Jersey, about, you know, 15 miles north. And that's when uh, Scott said, hey, what do you need? I said, I need a whole shop. And he goes, no, seriously, what do you need? And I was like, Scott, really? I need a whole shop. So, uh, you know, he was kind enough. And that kind enough is like ridiculously put. He sent me, uh, you know, MSRP, probably $23,000 worth of inventory with the note that said, pay me when you can. So that's what the PCA means to me. Um, those are my guys. They look after each other. You've been doing it since, I mean, one of the, one of the guys who is uh, very supportive of me up here, Andy Kirsten, was with the days of the, I think, RTDA. Is that what you guys were called? He was telling me one day. Yeah. So, yeah. It went from, yeah. It started off as the RTDA. Yeah. So retailer, tobacco, whatever it was, it was RTDA. He told me all the history of the organization. Like we sat down over a cigar. So very, very pro PCA people. Um, and I've witnessed nothing but love and, and how, listen, things aren't always pretty and they're not always the best, but I've witnessed how the organization, the association is constantly trying to fight for the right for us to smoke cigars. Bottom line, period. It might not be perfect. Yeah, you might. Yeah. You, all right. Cigar con. Big deal. Right. That blew up in everybody's face. So what you tried something as you've been doing since 1933. Right. Not everything is going to work, but you tried. And I applaud that. And I am appreciative of that. And I'm thankful for that so over time without it i don't know where i'd be i don't know if i'd be in the industry without help from the folks in the pca manufacturers just you name it i've had help from somebody in the ipcpr pca yeah yeah that's uh so that's that's my existence in the industry so we you know, you know so i had that little shop scott sent me that we were open for a couple of years and then we had a couple of police officers brutally murdered in New Jersey here. And the guys, one of my best friends from Jersey Mike's come in and said, listen, if you really want to give back, do like we do through sub sandwiches, shut all this shit down, stop being a vice principal and give back through cigars. So that's what I did. I sh shut the shop down. I resigned my principalship that a week after, but I stayed the year out and then uh, started Los Cayetos. So then, so you got, now you've transitioned from being a retailer and a store owner now into a manufacturer. So talk a little bit about this getting back in the and and the police officers and what precipitate you know obviously that precipitated your move. So let's talk a little bit about Los Caídos. What what does that stand for and what is the meaning behind your brand? So Los Caídos is I'm going to tilt to the side so people can see my face. I'm realizing you're looking at me in the shadows of my garage. Um, Los Caídos is Spanish for the fallen. It's my traditional nod of tip of the hat to the Latino community for working so hard to bring us cigars. A lot of people said I shouldn't, and Los Caídos is Spanish for the fallen. So a lot of people said I shouldn't name it Los Caídos because you can't search it on the web. You can't say it. You know, even Paul Palmer will tell you from Agonorsa, even I can't say it correctly myself. So that's a constant ongoing joke with us. But um, it is what it is. And I wasn't going to not, I, was, I wasn't going to not try to pay homage to the Latino community for bringing a cigar. So that's how the name came about. Um it was designed by some of the leaders of police unions throughout the country. Remember, I only started this uh, as a cigar benefiting law enforcement officers because two died in my hometown area. It wasn't until after I received a bunch of Facebook messages and at the golf outings, having a conversation with guys over beer that the firefighters, local FMBA 68 in Long Branch said, hey, you know, we got guys dying on our side, too. And when they said that, it really gave me pause and think. And then, you know, before the predicate date of August 2016, we got the red line on the market. So it's still the same cigar. I didn't know what the FDA was doing. Six by 54 Toro, medium bodied, full of flavor, made by Agonorsa Leaf. And the only difference is a dollar from every blue band goes to family members of fallen police officers. A dollar on a red band goes to family members of fallen firefighters. And that's it. That's that's outstanding. This is one of the things that I absolutely love about the cigar industry. And over the course of the past two years that I've been at the PCA, IPCR, IPCPR, PCA, and doing different events with different uh, policymakers, we do a lot of stuff, right? And one of the key things that I always hit on yes, is I, I have not seen any other industry and I've worked in associations and in varied industries, whether it's healthcare or engineering, construction, et cetera, uh, finance industry. I've never seen an industry. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got a funny story about that. If we can circle back to it a little bit later, but uh, yeah, oh, so we're it, gonna get to it. But very good. You've never seen an industry. I'm sorry, I just found that funny. Yeah, yeah, but I've never experienced an industry that per capita, dollar for dollar, that does more for communities than the premium cigar industry through our retail stores and through our manufacturers and how much they do. And a lot of that is coming to light right now. You know, I've seen things like the, the article yesterday where Alec Bradley and they're feeding their folks out of the manufacturers and talking to other manufacturers and what they're doing for their folks there in the localities and having visited the, the areas where these uh, manufacturing and the farm and the, and the, uh, the factories are. It's, it's amazing to see all that. But then also when you take into consideration, you know, America is a great country and America does a lot through charities and, 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 uh, and other private uh, sector initiatives. But when you think about the vast amounts of retailers that we have all across this country and how they're all engaged and involved in, in reaching out to the community and benefiting the community, it's pretty staggering, to be honest with you. And I think that that's one of the things that we have been um, so adamant about explaining when we get into these conversations with congressmen and senators and policymakers and hill staffers. They just don't have an idea or grasp the, the magnitude of what the cigar industry does. And so this is what one of the things that I really, really appreciate about your brand is that it takes that to another level, that the entire brand is built on giving back to a community. Uh, so in, in talking a little bit about, um, let's, let's first talk about what some of the offerings that you have. Um, you have just you have the one stick, is that correct? Yeah, so we have a couple offerings. Um, and let me say too, just to piggyback that, when I was a retailer, one of the most ironic things, and I saved it for Specific purpose, a little ironic article about it, or, or an article on the irony. Of it. American Cancer Society ever came to me for a donate the donation. So, like, that's the American Cancer Society, right? So, when they need us, they want us. Yeah, exactly. And they want everybody to give free shit. Can you give me an astronaut? Can you give me a lighter? A, can you give me a little set? I really want to raffle it off and raise money. Okay, no problem. And can I give you my logo to put on the, the pamphlet? Oh, no, we can't do that because we're the Cancer Society. All right, so you asked me for free shit so you can raise money, but I can't put my logo on your pamphlet. So uh, there's so much irony behind it, but the bottom line is if you're a retailer and you want to give, you just give, you yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's, that had, and we'll get into this, that really, and maybe this is a good segue that really impacted the model when I was a manufacturer. I didn't want retailers to have to give away free shit. So that's why they pay me a wholesale price on the cigar and I give the dollar back. So that way, when a police officer fire guy comes in and says, hey, listen, I need some free shit to raffle off my auction. You say, well, you could buy these maybe at a discounted price, but understand every one you buy a dollar is being given back. Like we gave eight thousand um, dollars over the past 13 months. We still have three thousand in the account, but that nonprofit to which I donate is governed yeah. by 15 members. So it's not like I could just wake up one day and say, OK, we're going to give another three thousand out. I don't make those decisions. All I do is write the check on every cigar sold. I'm involved. I'm the president of the nonprofit. But because there could be a possible conflict of interest, they decide a lot of what, how much is given and when. So those decisions have now been out of, I, I've moved those out of my hands. So there can't be any, uh, you know, bullshit thrown at me for, or, or less. Let me say this, people are still going to throw it, but a little less of it. Less. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so I tried to change that model for the retailer so they can have that arsenal of not giving uh, free stuff away, but understanding. And then the biggest power that I, I think, uh, and thank you for allowing me to present at this year's show, uh, I'll be briefly in the beginning on stage. And that's what I was saying to retailers like right now. And again, this is all a segue. I'll talk about the product, but I'm, I'm excited to announce what I want to do with the PCA. So we are only one cigar. I didn't know what the FDA was doing. Everybody was busting my ball saying you're only one stick, six by 54, medium bodied. You're only changed the band. When are you coming out with the Connecticut? When are you coming out with the Maduro, when you are, you know, full body, uh, all this, uh, when are you coming out with the Robusto, what, all this other stuff. Now, I'm a, I'm very blessed, right? I have a low overhead because I my warehouse is right outside of Philly, very, very low overhead. I'm fortunate in the sense that my wife is considered, um, what do you call it, essential. She's in the medical field, so she works every day. She's bringing home a paycheck. We don't have a lot of expenses and overhead as a family, so I don't need to necessarily make a ton of money on the cigars and all those criticisms that have been thrown my way are now a blessing in disguise because I don't have a ton of inventory I'm sitting on and need to push and need to push on people. Um, I don't have a lot of overhead. I have utilities and, and rent. That's it. Um, so I'm in a really, really good spot right now. Um, but it's hard to say that when you look and you have thousands of people dying, you have loved ones who can't even go into a hospital and see the, their spouse that they've been with for 30 years pass away. 
So for me, I've been very torn as of late. Like to what extent do you talk about cigars? To what extent do you try to make an offer to help retailers without seeming like you're self-indulgent and saying, oh, buy a Los Caitos cigar. Meanwhile, they're, they have loved ones dying. Like it's just messed me up a little bit. And it, it's it's I'm just very torn emotionally as far as for what what is the best thing to do you're damned if you do damned if you don't so no, I, I yeah exactly and, and my wife said say listen you have two cigars a day and a beer in the backyard next to the fire pit that's your way to cope with this people are going to want to smoke a cigar don't be afraid to talk about that so we've been talking about that as a family is like how do you navigate this right you don't know there's yeah. no there's no answer we've never been here so i'm just trying exactly. to do the best i can without offending anybody yeah, no, I mean, at the end of the day, people that are really seeking to be offended will choose to be offended by anything, to be honest with you. And yeah. and and so, I mean, look, it is, and I think people appreciate this. And one of the things I really appreciated when I first met you, it was sort of instant, you know, you're genuine and don't get any sort of, you know, any of the, 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 the guile or anything else from you. And so I think that people understand, especially with this project, right, is that what this is for. And so I don't necessarily, so people are still, everyone's trying to figure out how, how do we operate business in this environment? And I know that our retailers are fighting as hard as they can tooth and nail to continue to operate fighting, you know, sort of idiotic decrees that are coming down um, somehow, like, for example, in St. Louis with Jessica Hudson uh, for 48 hours, it was illegal to sell tobacco because the, the mayor and people there just don't know what they're doing. And that's not necessarily a knock on them because these are unprecedented times. And I understand that they're trying to err on the side of, uh, of, of public health and safety, but at the other side of things, you know, it's it's very easy to overcorrect in these instances, right? And so that's kind oh, of what yeah. we're seeing. There's there's no playbook for this, and so everybody is trying to figure this all out right now, um, while the Correct. pressure kind of c continues to mount. The longer that that it really kind of goes on, with the severity at which it's going as well. Uh, so in, in terms of th those offerings, this is kind of one of the uh, other things I wanted to talk about too, and you know, why we wanted to come on here is that you had this idea and we discussed it for a little bit. And I would just like now, considering the state of the industry that we're kind of talking about here, sort of our second topic that we wanted to discuss is this, this announcement that you want to make for PCA retailers and kind of what you're offering. And, and um, so if you want to go ahead and go into that, um, yeah. and then we can kind of let everybody know that more information is coming, but I think that, that this is great. This will actually really help retailers. It'll help the families of um, all those families that you're talking about that you help already too. So please, by all means. Yeah. Thank you for that. And, uh, so let me say a couple different things. One, last week or two weeks ago, I forget what it was. I was on with the Wolf of K Street. I think he goes by Josh, who was also with the PCA. And I made the announcement <laughs> saying- He will very much hey. appreciate that nickname, by the way. He, he's killing me. So what I was saying is, if anybody, I still have a few books from David Garofalo, David versus Goliath. If anybody wants one, I asked Josh specifically, am I going to be able to go back and look at the comments so I can send these books out to people who request them? He said, yes. And I have not been able to, and it's not his fault. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but I need to go back and look at those comments. Two people so far called me on it. I mailed them out immediately. So if anybody watching this wants one of those books, please reach out to me. I will mail you a book. It gives you great ideas as to how you can make money. And some of them are very, very applicable right now, but that's not the special offer. The reason I told you before about my wife's work and being considered essential and my low overhead um, as a manufacturer is, um, you know, I have a couple different products. One is the starter kit that I released at the PCA this year. It's a 49 count box with a 20 count box. It's used to refill. It's a $590 package. I discounted 10% for new relationships, which is 531 bucks. That is very, very, very expensive. What people don't know or not a lot of retailers knew is that I have these 11 count boxes that are very special gift items. It's only 11 in a box. They retail for five a piece, $55 total. Um, and what I'm gonna do for, if you're, you have to be a member of the PCA, it's for PCA members only. I have a flyer here designed by Julie Gannon. She's great and she does awesome work. So you're gonna get a beautiful, you know, I'm gonna send this out to all the retailers who are members of the PCA that I researched. By the way, you should know that they protect your data very, very strongly because I asked the PCA for a mailing list and they would not give it to me. But so I'm gonna find your mailing address and I'm gonna give it out to you. But I thought that was really, really cool because they are very protective of your information as well. So I'm gonna send it out, but you get free shipping on any order of four or more boxes, which goes on the invoice that I send to you. But the probably the biggest thing I would want right now when I was a retailer is cash flow and help. So 
I am not going to collect any payments. You have 45 day terms, whether I know you or not. You have 45 day terms. If you're struggling to the point where you need 60 day or 90 day terms, talk to me. All right. I will make allowances. Um, but just just reach out to me. There are 11 count boxes, 55 bucks, free shipping on orders of four boxes or more. You don't have to pay me for 45, 60, 90 days. And where this is really helpful for you is right now the, the public sentiment for first responders is very, very high. And I know most every retailer in this country has a police department or a fire department in their local community. So it, they don't have to be necessarily the ones to come in and purchase it from you, but maybe someone who wants to support a first responder, like those buying lunches and dinners for first responders, maybe they want to know a guy, a gal who smokes cigars, they're in a the community, they're helping to save others, they're working long hours, maybe they just want to buy the person a box of cigars. So this is there for you for that reason. Um, if you buy 10, you get one free. And... Like I said, they make great gifts. They're there for the first responders. I don't know really what else I could tell you about it. Everything is going to be in the, on the invoice shipping, everything. So you really just, I'm sending you the boxes and I don't have to see you for 90 days. Um, I prefer 45, but we don't know how long this is going to go on. So if it's longer, it's longer. I'm in a good position. I have low overhead, low rent. I don't need your money. Um, and my wife's working and we have some money saved up. So I'm in a good spot. I'm in a really, really good spot. This is not a desperation sale for most guys just to say, please buy me or I'm going to go out of existence. I'm not. I'm going to be fine. Um, this is really for you. And I tried to imagine what I would want when I was Beach House Cigars here in New Jersey. What would I want? And the biggest thing I wanted would no minimums, you know, low overhead um, and then terms. Just let get. Give me the product, let me sell it, and then I'll pay you back after I sell it, just like Scott Regina did for me. So I'm extending, uh, kind of paying it, however you, it's not paying it forward because Scott already did that for me, but I'm trying to implement that same thing that meant so much to me when I was a retailer just starting up and I had nothing after Hurricane Sandy. I'm trying to help retailers who might have nothing right now. And that's the only way I can help, folks. Um, I can't, I don't have enough money to send you, I would. Um, but other than that, that's really, and I will still make the dollar donation on every box. Um, you will be known. And here's the other thing, too. I am very uh, in tune with those who service the community. The nonprofit board is made up of 15 people from all throughout. They have somebody on the board who knows somebody. I will let your local fire department uh, union leaders and your police department union leaders know that you now have this cigar. And I will send them the flyer. Not with the pricing information, they're going to get a different graphic that we are making up to say, hey, go support X retail shop. And also, if you've noticed on my Instagram, which you probably have, and I don't have that many followers. Um, but what I'm doing is once every few days, I'm changing out the link. It doesn't go to my website. It goes to a retailer website. So last week was David cool. Garofalo's two guys. This week, you'll see Smoke In. I'm going to put Scott Regina's up there. So all those people who've supported me. And it's, it's a few. I might have to start doing this every day because weeks would it would be a very long time. So I'm going to start doing this every day. I'm going to change that website out. So if you do support me, you can go to Los Kaidos on my Instagram page, Facebook, click that link, and they'll be taken to your page if you sell online. And that's, that's really amazing. it. And it's only for PCA members because I, I really strongly believe in the organization. I, I felt you've gotten some undue bad uh press kicking the balls to say whatever and i just i'm i'm here to support you and and, and those who are members that's it yeah that's all Thank that, you. that's what came about man that's what this is no I, I love it i love this because um just as you were saying i love the fact that you, look you're bringing your perspective and your your background and your experience as a retailer uh so you have the utmost empathy because you've been in this situation not only can you empathize yeah. because you've been a retailer you were a retailer that went through a natural disaster and had to kind of, and so you've been in a really similar position and other people were in a position to help you. And so I, I love the fact that, that it very much is, look, it's the emulation. It is the paying it forward aspect of it. But at the same time, one of the great things about this is it reminds me, so I played um, hockey for a, uh, a, quite a few years and uh, there's obviously a lot of firemen and a lot of policemen that play hockey. And I was fortunate to be on a team where we had, you know, both oftentimes the, the policemen and firemen are playing against each other. Right. And it's a fun rivalry. Um, but we had, you know, some cops and we had some firemen that were on our team. Fun. And I remember talking, 
Go, go ahead. Scott, on for the first period. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I've seen those yeah. get ugly. <laughs> yeah. So have I. I was on the receiving end of a of a check kind of to the head from a cop at one point and uh oh. it was it was it was pretty brutal. Yeah, I had a concussion, my contact was locked up in my eye. Uh, but it was fun. I did score at least before I had to leave the game. But yeah, at any baby. rate, <laughs> but at any rate, um, <laughs> the, one of the things is I remember, you know, it's beer league, so you're sitting in the in the locker room afterwards having beers. And I was talking to um, this guy Ryan that I played hockey with, and he's a firefighter in DC. And he's not too far away from from our office. And so uh, when I first got the position, we were talking about it, and um, you know, I had some cigars with uh, some of my teammates earlier too. Uh, but we were talking. He's like, "Oh yeah," he said, "You know what the." The end of shifts or things like that, we oftentimes will go out after, you know, having a meal and just sit out in front of the, the house and, you know, about six, seven guys in the firehouse will sit there and have cigars. And um, it's pretty similar to even kind of when we talked to uh, former Congressman Carney from Pennsylvania, who would talk about when he was serving overseas, that they can't have alcohol in a lot of these countries where they're at. Right. And so what they would do when they come out of the box for the day is they would all sit back and relax with a cigar. It's away from them to unwind. Right. So in high pressure situations and right now, you know, first responders, it's it's I mean, you think about the rest of us right now. A lot of us are it's it's trepidation. It's uncertainty and uncertainty breeds the fear and everything else that's going on. Well, they're on the front lines continuing responding to things with people that and so they're putting again greater risk as it continues to go on right they can't see family a lot of the normal ways in which they could decompress are gone and so this i think is a great way to kind of offer that plus it continues to give back to their own community where their families for for you know who have experienced strategy for these guys their service are going to be able to benefit from this as well so this is truly one of those situations to where it's, it's kind of a win all around um, and so th that's, that's one of the, the best things about, uh, I don't even want to call this charity necessarily because, um, it, it, but the way that, that, you know, a good business like this for people operates. And I think this is a phenomenal story and a phenomenal success story. Yeah. And if anybody t is listening to the show right now and who is not a member of the PCA and they're saying, well, shit, that can't apply to me because I'm not a member of the PCA. There's there's a real easy answer to that. Right. And, and I hate to be callous about, it, but become a member, become right. a member. That's what everybody yeah. should be doing. Yeah. And, and we look, we understand times are times are tight. Times are tough. And, and what people are going through right now, uh, if you need us to work with you, just reach out, just reach out. We're, we're here. We're answering phones. We're working every day, all day. We're working on weekends, even uh, as we're going through and continuing to try to get resources out and connect with folks and continue to lobby and, and, and even litigation and, and continuing the suits for delays and things like that. So it's still nonstop for us. And so please reach out to us at any time. If anybody has any questions they want to join or something along those lines and, and whatever else, reach out because just like you, um, we're, we're willing to work with anybody at this at this time because we understand what it means. And I can um, vouch for that because you've worked with me on many occasions, many occasions. You've been, when I went through my struggle, if you remember, here's a funny story for everybody. I think I shared <laughs> it with the Wolf of K Street. Um, <laughs> the Wolf. In Start 16, wolf. when I launched, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I had 500 boxes made. I launched them in March. And then by the time the PCA came around, I didn't have any. I sold out in months and I didn't realize that. So I showed up at a corner booth next to a very well-known retailer with a picnic table, one box of cigars, and a bunch of magazine articles. That was it. And you guys had every right to throw me out on my ass, and you didn't. You said, hey, man, glad you can make it. I, I get it. Your first show, you didn't really know what to expect. I had nothing to give anybody. I had zero. And uh, it's funny you say Alan Rubin because he was one of the guys who's been very supportive. I think we'd say... I think he would agree I'm very supportive of him, of him as well and his efforts, but he laughs. And, and to this day, a lot of the guys who remembered me back in 16 with that booth mentioned it this year in 19. So it was pretty funny. You know, it was pretty as funny. Long as, you, all, as long as you're still guys, here, you back and laugh. That's great. Oh, it's hysterical. So shout out to Alan for what he's doing and everybody, just everybody. It's like you said, man. If you're not in this industry, I don't think a lot of people can appreciate and understand what it is. It's an awesome industry. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I really do like the moniker of family because um, it's one of those things to where uh, nobody supports you like a family. 
and nobody fights like a family. But anybody on the outside that comes against the family, the family's like, no, 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 that's not the way that this works. It's right? so funny you say that, Scott, because I was thinking about this call and I was thinking, how do I say it with class? And I, I don't like people think I'm a nice guy and I'm, I'm, I'm this and that and whatever they want to say about me. But I'm also genuine in a bad way too. Like, like if you're an <laughs> asshole, I'm going to tell you, right? So I was really thinking about how to cordially or as best say it as I can. And that was the example I used, right? Like I have twin boys who were 15. I grew up with the sister four years older. You fight like cats and dogs. Like my kids have literally put each other through screen doors and things like that. They could do that to each other, right? If anybody else were to try it, good luck, right? Yeah. Like they will fight to the death for their brother. And that's yeah. how I feel like the PPA, like you guys have gotten kicked down so many times recently and it's easy for those on the outside right like that that famous poem from roosevelt right those like for the people who are on the outside who don't know the taste of victory or defeat shame on them so a lot of people could sit on the outside and say oh cigar con what an ass idea stupid but you tried you did something you tried it okay so it might not have worked you go back to the drawing board i can say to you or others can say to you who've been with the pca for a long time and our staunch supporters, I could say, Scott, what the hell were you thinking? Like if we were to have a yeah. beer one day or over a cigar, like what the hell was that about? Right. But if someone <laughs> from the outside says that, bro, like get off your ass, try something in life, do something, join a PCA, be an active member, really engaged. Then you, then you have a right to say something until yeah. then just try to appreciate them for fighting what you love to do. That's really the only stance anybody should be taking. Who's on the outside. Yeah, well, and I do my best to anybody that has questions or anything else, especially when it comes to things like that, that I have some fundamental changes in the way things are going uh, to engage in conversations. Because I think a lot of times a lot of the reactions are, um, and I totally get them, um, because oftentimes the you know, communications doesn't come out or whatever else. No, hence the reason why we're trying to be as diligent as possible about being way more communicative when it comes to these types of things to be able to explain situations and things like that, because these things are not hatched a in a vacuum or B quickly. Um, right. So, I mean, I, I kind of came in, you know, in the third quarter of, of, of what a consumer component to uh, Scott, I'm gonna, a trade show would be. You. I'm going to stop you there unless you feel the need to explain it. You owe an explanation. To oh, no, 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 You're on no, the no, front I, line. You're in the fire. <laughs> just like you said about the COVID, right? Who wrote the right. playbook on the FDA coming in and changing their mind 20 times? Who, who, wh where's that playbook ever been well, done yeah. before? Yeah. So yeah. Oh, oh, it only, it only happened guys. with tobacco. Yeah. I applaud you guys for sitting there every day trying to figure it out, trying to try new th things. They work. They don't work. It doesn't matter. You're still sitting there every day in the front lines trying to, trying to fight for our freedom to, to smoke cigars. And that's it. That's all. That's it. Yeah. That's the only thing anyone should be saying to you is thank you, Brian. Period. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. My only, my only reason for saying that is, is that the I do believe a lot of really good actually has come out of that, that cigar con thing because it's it's opened us up to kind of have start having a lot more of these conversations. Uh, also, just want to say real quick, uh, a good Butch says, "What's up, Z? If you want to say hi to Butch, Butch Guzzi. So, so Butch Guzzi. So everybody knows. I want everyone to know that." This he represents. He, he's still in Long Branch. He's on the board of a nonprofit, and he was at Ground Zero on 9/11, trying to help others. And he's a huge cigar smoker. Um, so proud member of the Holy Smoke Cigar Club up here in Jersey. So I just have to say, so if he's on and he says hello, I can't see a lot of that stuff. Um, I'll learn how to soon. But he's a staunch supporter, and he is a first responder. I I actually offered to bring. So now he and I are pretty close. Right. Like he and I talk frequently on the phone, cell phone calls, everything. I offered to bring him cigars and he said, no. I said, why? No. He goes, stay home. I said, OK. He goes, like, <laughs> he's, he's like, what is wrong with you, dude? And I was like, I just want you to have cigars. And he's like, but I don't know if you have this COVID. I said, are you kidding me? He said, no, stay home. So I haven't seen him. I have not seen him. He, he refuses to allow me to the firehouse to give him cigars. <laughs> Mail him, I guess. Right. Thomas says I'm hello too. I'm going to think of something. Tommy Siciliano, if that's Thomas Siciliano, again, another board member, fire marshal, Long Branch, New Jersey, first responder, retired, um, doing great, great things through cigars. So anyway, I'm glad to see these guys popping on here, man. I love those guys. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's good. You know, I remember uh, uh, there's a retail member out in uh, 
in Illinois called Norwood Royal Cigars. I remember visiting them a couple of years ago. And Big Shaw is the owner there. And he's got a, a, a area he's at. He's got a lot of um, policemen and firefighters that are uh, belong to his club there and patron his store as well. And so I know he's done a lot of work with them too. So it's a great community. And like I said, I've been uh, uh, had a lot of fun playing hockey with the guys and, and kind of mixing it up there too. And so it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, it's uh, – you should know my wife's from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. Hockey's Outstanding. big. Outstanding. Yes, yes. And I don't know if you know Andy Nagy from Cigar. Yes. Chinato. Do you know Andy Nagy, Andrew Nagy? Sure do. You guys, you guys should have a conversation. Maybe we could get a little PCA hockey thing going in Vegas. That would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. You know, Josh, our good wolf, he's a, he's a hockey player too from good old Erie, Pennsylvania, so – be fun. I'm not that good. <laughs> and, and what I will I, say is this: I'm, I'm, I'm going to say one hockey. thing, and I'm going to offer myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the one thing I will say, Tom Siciliano and Butch, who were on before, I don't know if they're still on. They were the dudes I told you about that said, "Hey, we have guys dying on the side too." They were the reason the Red Band came out. Those oh, two awesome. guys on right now, they were the they were the guys that really start the Red Band idea in my head. Number one and number two, for anyone interested in possibly having that hockey game, I will enter myself as. The the goalie i've never played hockey in my life but if anyone wants to take shots at me have at it man i'll put myself in his goalie <laughs> outstanding that's not really a threat coming from me because my shot isn't that hard so i mean quite frankly you could just stuff some toilet well if you can find toilet paper you could just stuff <laughs> toilet paper in your sweatshirt and that's all the padding you're gonna need for my show no 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 no. you're not wasting <laughs> toilet paper now boy no way. <laughs> i know yeah Maybe get some of the uh, the the, the styrofoam peanuts and put it inside your sweatshirt. That would probably be good. Yeah. Uh, there you go. So, so I did want to take a little bit of time just to kind of. I mean, we talked a little bit about your your past, but um, I, I think you mentioned before uh, this. You do a motorcycle ride uh, for charity. Is that correct? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that because I think this is really interesting. So in sixteen, after the PCA show. Um, it happened right around the same time as the PCA show. I want to say, I forget when the show was in 16. I don't know if it was August or not, but that July. So I, I, I basically sold out um, and I didn't have a lot of inventory. I had a couple boxes left maybe, but not enough to bring to the PCA by any means. So I had a couple on hand and then the downtown massacre occurred in Dallas where five guys oh. were shot, nine yeah. were injured. And I said, enough is enough. And I just wanted to do something. So I got on my Harley and I went cross country from Jersey to Los Angeles and back. Um, 7,726 miles in 14 days. I'll never do it again. It was, I was on a bike about, uh, I was doing about 500, 700 miles a day. Um, mm -hmm. It was documented on Facebook and, and everything else. Um, so it was, it was, it was interesting to say the least. I came back from that and I was so tired. I said, I'll never do that again. I put a lot of people in danger. Two people followed me in a chase car for safety reasons, but they ended up falling asleep at the wheel while I was still on the motorcycle. I lost, well, I mean, they didn't get crashed or anything else, but they needed to stop a lot more often than I did. So I, I lost them around Tampa or Miami. I just started making a trek back home alone because they were just too tired and I didn't want to put them in danger. So you lost it, both of them. There, there were two guys in a truck that just got tired. Yeah. No. <laughs> so the uh, say to quote Oscar Wilde, seem one seems unfortunate. Seem two seems like carelessness. Yeah, no, no, no. It was it was good. Um, but every, everything was great. I, I thank them so much for coming and watching my back. Yeah. I, I knew I couldn't do the same model again. So I came out in 2018 in December. We had an event at Scallywag in uh, Old Town, Scottsdale. We had an event with Luz in Miami, and we had an event with oh, Phil, nice. Hop, uh, Phil over at Hoppers in La Mesa who I met at the PCA, which was a really good, when you had it in or, uh, Orlando. So okay. uh, those three, I said, I'm going to test a new model. I'm going to go into a cigar shop on a Thursday, Friday night, have the ride Saturday and leave out on Sunday. And the model worked great in December. I was very happy with it. So we came out in 2019 last year. So that was December of 18. 2019, we decided to take uh, rides in 17 cities. And just a brief story of one. I don't know if you know Keith Rumbo over Club Humidor in, in San Antonio, but yeah, Greg, yeah. Garza, Greg Garza had just lost his life, I believe, on October 16th. 
2019, a firefighter. So we got there in November 16th for the ride. We had an event Friday night, I think November 15th. And we did, we did so much in cigar sales that we were able to present the check to the 100 club of San Antonio in the memory of Greg Garza for a thousand dollars based on the sales we did that one night at Keith's place. So it's a, that's it fantastic. Was, that's so cool. It was, it was so powerful. It was so powerful. And then I believe another member is Costa Monte Cristo. We worked with them out of uh, yeah. Costa Monte Cristo Serious Cigars in Houston. And we did so much there that, and they were so supportive. And this is also pre and post sales. This isn't just the day of the event, right? So we did so much there that on November 23rd, I went back to Houston. Ruby Roman lost her, her life. And I, I was able to present the check with the help of Costa Monte Cristo for a thousand dollars to her husband and two kids. And it was the first mm -hmm. time ever where I presented a check directly to the family members. And I have twin boys that are 15. So to hold her son in my arms at three years old while I'm presenting her husband, the other half of the check, it was, yeah, like it's hard for me to talk about without tearing up because yeah. it, it was special, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh, again. Um, so, so much hard in this industry. Um, and, uh, yeah, and to, to Butch's point right here, it says you got a big heart. You're always looking to give to a good cause. Right. And so, um, and I just think that that kind of underscores it. I mean, I think to be honest, I think it's natural that somebody like you would gravitate towards the cigar industry just by the nature of kind of the way that the cigar industry is. Right. Yeah. Like we get a lot of shit, but you know, if you look at everything everyone's talked about and, and I'm not naming names because I'm friends with them. I like them and all that. That's true. Right. I go out for beers at the shows and everything else with them. But you look at a guy like Alan, you look at a guy like Scott Regina, you look at a Michael Herkloch, you look at everything all these guys have ever written and every magazine ever published about them. Right. What's the one thing they're always saying? This is the one thing that it doesn't matter if you're black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Jew, guy, girl, old, young, rich, poor. It doesn't matter. All that yeah. shit gets left at the door. Just come in and sit down and smoke a cigar with me. And that's the power yeah. of these things. That is yeah. the power of these things. So to be able to do that together and raise money for people who need it, whether it's cancer research, whether it's people suffering from COVID, people going hungry, people who need clothes, officers and firefighters dying in the line of duty. It doesn't matter what it is. We have a very powerful position and, and all the work Alan and, and Fuente and other people are doing. I mean, look yeah. at what Fuente's done. I mean, goodness, right. right? So you just have so many amazing people doing so many amazing things that I'm just, a, I, I'm, I'm what I, what I tell you, I'm a little guy on a totem pole. Like there are so many others above me that I'm just following their leads, man. I'm just following yeah. their leads. And I just hope to make them proud. Of, like I, I hope to make a Fuente proud of me saying, Hey, you know what? I'm glad I could pave the way for you. You're yeah, like, I want him to be happy and proud of the way I'm trying to honor the tradition of giving back in this industry because he has yeah. paved the way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that uh, everybody recognizes that they owed a great deal of debt to, to them as well. Um, but before we close here, I just want to ask you, um, I like asking this question because I love food and I think that uh, I like this question, but uh, quarantined, What's the one meal that you have to have if you were quarantined or on a deserted island, whatever else, but quarantine because you have access to your, your kitchen, whatever. What's the one meal that if you had to eat the same thing, if you could not go outside for an entire month, what's the one meal that you're going to eat every day? Question. I have, I'm going to answer it in a, in a different way, right? Okay. So okay. If, I had, if I had my druthers and I had access to it and I was not lazy enough whereby I could cook it on my grill every day. 100% spare ribs. There is no oh, doubt in my mind my meal of choice would be ribs. But because I might not have access to it or it's harder to access, and because I'm lazy, I my favorite thing in the world is quick oat, oatmeal, two minutes in the microwave, honey, cinnamon, raisins. I'm good. Every, all day long with a beer and a cigar, I'm good. <laughs> but what, what said pistachios? I don't know if that rings true. Or... <laughs> I think our friendship just ended. <laughs> he's only saying he's only saying that because I was hungry as hell one night up at the club and, and he had these gourmet pistachios and he got up and I might have had a few too many. He came back and was a little pissed. So that's why his that, that's his pistachio comment. So uh, I hold, I gotta ask though. So what makes him gourmet pistachios? I don't know, dude. He's Italian. You gotta ask him. The Italians <laughs> with their food, the one thing you don't do with the Jersey Italian is mess with his food. And I messed with his food and it was a problem. <laughs> 
my, my wife, who is absolutely not, but maybe she, maybe she has some kind of, you know, Jersey Italian in her lineage somewhere is very much the same way. She'll, she'll turn it on her kids and she'll look at them. She's like, Hey, mommy doesn't share fries. So it's kind of a similar thing in our, in our household too, with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I think those pistachios were coated with some type of like, like Chipotle, like a uh, rub or something like that. Dude, they were delicious. They were del out of this world. Right. So now you're world. What would you have? So now you're what just off in the wood telling them how delicious they were when you ate all of them. <laughs> just, don't 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 put gas on the fire, dude. You're talking. Well, he's a fireman. He he'll appreciate that phrase. Do not put gas on the fire. <laughs> what would your one meal be, Scott? Oh God, that's a great question. I, I think that I would have to probably go with uh, tacos, just because there's so many different ways. Okay, Butch was saying there's salt and pepper and pistachios from Costco, so that I get. Um, okay. I would be pissed at you too. Um, I would probably go with tacos because there's so many different ways, right? I can you can do some shredded pork one night, you can do shrimp another. So I would go with tacos just because so many varieties to go with there, and I love I love all varieties of tacos, and I love the spicy. And I really that's actually one of my favorite things is after a good spicy meal. That's that's when I crave a cigar the most to go have a cigar and a coffee after a good spicy meal. That's 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 a very well laid out, intellectually developed answer. Like that's smart. Right. Uh, that's like yeah. a multi. You could throw anything in the taco shell. That is that is wise, man. I, I like that. <laughs> thank I like you, that. Thank you. So, so I earned, that's I kind, earned of a, thing with, it's kind of the same thing with oatmeal. It is. Well, that's right. very true. One day yeah. I could throw like, strawberries and honey and bananas in it. The other day I got my cinnamon and raisins going. So it's interesting. There a lot go. of similarities yeah. there. I did not earn my moniker of fat kid for nothing. I do love food so much. I went to culinary school just so that I could ensure that I would never, ever have a bad meal. Did you really? I did. Yeah, back in the early two thousand. Still like, are you still good in the kitchen? Yeah, 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 uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I've been out of practice for a couple of years. Actually, since starting this job, I've had a lot less time to actually do it. But yeah, I know my way around pretty well. So listen, I don't have the resources to have a huge party, but if I have a party, a private party, kind of for the 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 people who've supported me the most, you might be the one cooking it. How fun would that I, be? That would be, I, I would love to. There's a lot of, you know what? There's a lot of great cooks in the cigar community, man. I love watching uh, uh, Carney, John Carney from uh, La Florida Dominicana. He's always growing up some meats. He's, this guy, Skip Martin. Geez, Skip Martin, I think probably could start a, uh, a uh, Aroma Craft Tavern. Dude, with the food but he he's in like, he's in food mecca capital of the world, right? Know, like Austin's you have crazy. Austin, you have San Antonio, yeah. you have Dallas, Fort Worth, like so many places in Texas. And dude, Austin is like, so, so I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit of a foodie myself. There was recently a study of a report put out by Watt Hub that ranks the top 180 um, diversity and everything else. You got to check out the place. Like Skip Martin's in a great area for food, man. I love, yeah, I love Austin. I, my brother used to live in San Antonio and I had a uh, good friend that was down there too. And I used to love going down there. And just uh, hitting up Austin in that restaurant scene because it's it's incredible. That's one thing that I've loved a lot about DC is over the past twenty years, it has exploded into a phenomenal culinary scene. And the next time you're in DC, one thing you definitely have to do is uh, so John Anderson, pardon me, our president of the PCA, he and his business partner Matt Krim just opened up a, a barbecue joint called Cinder, and it's it's so good. It's, really, it's delicious. Yeah, it's That's really awesome. good. And by the way, I don't know. I I, I I would guarantee dollars to donuts. Skip's not listening, but we might have to reach out to him. I think we just thought of some new packaging for him. Three yeah. cigars in a taco shell. That would be pretty cool. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Roma, the Roma taco. I like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm on board. And, and, and I'm going to, I'll say Thomas, but I know you called him Tommy. Said I earned a spot with the espresso. I just want to point out something here. Espresso is definitely my drink. This box was just delivered as we were talking, and this is full of my espresso actually, because nice. I just ran out. <laughs> Dude, uh, so, so, yeah. so so on the on the topic of food, Tom Siciliano was funny as heck with Butch because one night they invited invited me up to the firehouse to have dinner, right? So I presented them with the, one of the first checks that we ever gave out on October second, two thousand eighteen, at Club Macanudo in the city. Oh, nice. Um, just for for always being there and supporting it, right? So they invited me up for dinner at the firehouse and they said seven o'clock. Right. And they were texting me like, Hey, what time can you get here? What time can you get here? And they said, okay, seven o'clock, dude, when they give you a time at the firehouse, you best be there at seven sharp. That food was <laughs> hot plated and in my spot where I was to be sitting at seven 
sharp. It wasn't 701. It wasn't 658. It was seven. So those guys are great guys. And man, the food that they can put out, forget it. Forget it. A lot of these guys can cook, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they. Uh, I remember talking with a lot of the firefighters when uh, for the hockey team, and they'd often talk about that. Because what, oftentimes what we do is we would do what we call tailgating, is when the weather was nice and after games, we would go outside and we would tailgate after the games, right? Mm -hmm. So you have your beers, cigars, and, and yeah. So the tailgating there, whether it was, you know, broth, sausages, you know, steaks, burgers, all that kind of stuff, chili. I mean, these guys were making some great stuff, so. That's awesome. Stuff. Well, Steve, uh, any last words? I just want to say thank you very much. I think that so PCA retailers, um, for anybody that's watching this now or the video is going to stay up, it's going to be on our Facebook and our YouTube channels. Uh, so make sure reach out to either us if you uh, want to get that information because we have it or you can reach out to Steve directly. Um, make sure you take advantage of this. If you have the ability to reach out, like Steve said, he's giving you some terms too, to, to be able to use this pass through from 45 or reach out to him. Um, but I want to say thank you so much for everything that you're doing, for joining us today. Um, and any any last words of Los Cayitos Zangle wisdom for the uh, PCA body and any of our viewers? Just um, I'll first, I'll get you the file, Scott. You could do whatever you want with it for this offer. If you want to mail it out to them or you want me to, it is only for PCA retailers. You have to be a member to take advantage of this offer. I don't need your money for 45 days at least. If you need longer terms, talk to me. Uh, um, and then the one thing I would say is, you know, when we founded the company, we founded it on empathy. A lot of people are handling this right now in, in ways um, that they see fit for them. And I would only encourage everybody, uh, you know, if, if you're the type of person that gets upset because you might have lost a loved one and you're pissed off at the person that put up a meme about it. I get it. Be empathetic. That's maybe their way of coping with it through dark humor. So not everybody is going to view the current situation the same way. I really strongly encourage everybody to just please be empathetic. Put yourself in their shoes first and see whatever angle it's coming from through their perspective before you judge. Um, please don't judge others at this time. It's really, really a tough time for everybody. I hope everybody is healthy. Um, and PCA, everybody, Scott and your crew over there, Aaron, Christina, Wolf of K, appreciate everything you all have done. Um, Thanks. you know, you, you have been probably very empathetic to everybody's needs and I just appreciate you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the uh, staff has been, uh, doing well, acclimated to our, uh, re remote working and, and continuing to uh, press on there and do what we need to do. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. We've always appreciated, uh, such great members like you guys who uh, obviously support and understand the, the larger aspects of what we're trying to do. Butch has a great idea. And I think this is what we should do when this all gets lifted and we're able to kind of have meetings again. We'll have you guys down to do one of our um, events at the townhouse with Capitol Hill folks. And we can do, as Butch calls it, a meet and greet, an M-E-A-T. So we can have some good meets and uh, greet smoke at the townhouse with some of you guys and kind of talk to our, our folks on Capitol Hill all about the, the cigar community and the first responder community. I think that that's a, that's a, a nice idea. You have do you Do you realize what you just created a monster by telling that man he had a great idea? <laughs> that's it. Now every 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 week I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a weekly text. Z, when are we doing a meet and greet? When are we doing a meet and greet? He's an awesome <laughs> dude. He is a he is a great guy. You I'm telling you, you you would love me. He's probably gonna be with me at the PCA this year. Awesome. Fantastic. Yep. Well well I look forward to uh to seeing you all and then in the interim, thank you again. We'll get that information out. Um and what's where's the best place for somebody to get in contact with you? What's the so easiest? Our way? website our website is not the best, but it does give a contact information form. And if you want to reach me directly, it's Steve at Los Caidos.us. If you can't spell it, you see it on my hat, just look it up, Google it. Um, but it's L O S C A I D O S dot U S, not dot com. Um, Steve at Los Caidos dot US. Tell me you want the deal. I'll give you the deal. I'll send you one of David Groffalo's books. Hello, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> getting a fed. We're both getting deliveries here today while we're on the show. This is great, but mine's not coffee. I can tell you that. Um, so anyway, but thanks everybody for taking the time out of your day. This has been almost an hour long, so you can't get that back in life. So I really appreciate you giving the time. Um, if you take me up on the offer, great. If you don't, you don't. It is what it is. But regardless, please support the PCA because they're doing everything they can to fight for our freedom to smoke a cigar. So thank you, PCA. Again, I can't thank you enough.
Uh, so it's it's our pleasure, and uh, we love this industry, and uh, it's it's really it's it's really our pleasure to be able to fight for it and uh, and enjoy as much of you all as we possibly can because it's like we said, it's a family, and we enjoy being a part of that family. And so Tommy and Butch, I thank you guys both for joining and, and giving Steve some uh, some zings and zarazim a little bit. And I look forward to the time when I can meet you guys and uh, thank you again for, <laughs> for what you guys have done. So have, have a great day. And, and again, anybody, if uh, if you're having trouble locating anything on Los Cayudos please reach out to myself or, or Aaron or Christine at PCA and we can easily connect you or get you that information as well. So, all right. Steve, have a good day, everybody. Please stay safe. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Goodbye, everybody. Join all us right, tomorrow. Uh, I just want to say this too. Join us tomorrow when uh, Alan Rubin from Alec Bradley will be our guest with myself and Josh. Oh, what time is that? At three o'clock. We're always at three o'clock Eastern time. So he'll be all on. right. Tomorrow. Nice. Good I'm gonna, I might get on. I'm going to have some fast fingers typing that, so I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Right, Sounds good. Take care, guys. Have a good one.